Um, also, uh, we, that having that time off together also allows us then to be able to moderate our students' work and to make sure that we are consistent in what we see as being uh, really good work by students. So that we have very much similar to uh, what VCE teachers would do with modify, uh, moderating students' work, we're able to bring that back down into our other year levels. We're also able to uh, <coughs> regularly keep an eye on where the actual level of students' development, so we're able to move them up into the next areas. Uh, we use a range of different uh, assessments such as VALS and On Demand, NAPLAN and uh, anecdotal evidence as well as uh, regular classroom testing results as well. Following on from what Eros has just said, we developed as a staff something we called our PLUS document, so personal li personalised learning through a deep understanding of where the kids are at and where we want them to move to. This document is a working document and it's probably the first time that we've developed something that all the teachers can actually put down where their vowels progression points are for each student and we've grouped them in terms of a high, medium and low. So the high group is the kids who are extended or the kids who we know that are above their level, the medium is just below that and the low group is usually the kids who are either integration or who we know that we really need to work with. I'll show you an example of one of our PLUS documents. It's a little bit small. It's a maths one where you can see we've got all the domains and the dimensions listed in the table. Um, and it, it literally has been copied and pasted from the VECA website. And I know that sounds a little bit tedious and a little bit laborious and some of our teachers are a little bit concerned that it was just a copy paste. But once you've done it once, it's just something that then every year we don't need to repeat it because we've all got them and the progression points as far as I know aren't going to change. So it's just hopefully. <laughs> it's just a matter of changing the groups of kids at the top. So we have a look at where the actual student fits in and then we fill in our assessment, so what we're actually going to use to assess that progression point. Where the students were from, their entry level for VALS, and we use the report, like all the, the information that Eros has just spoken about. Where we want them to be, so the target, and then at the end of semester one, semester one and semester two when we write our reports we fill in their actual level so it, it was very time consuming to get these documents up and running but now that we've done it for a whole year it's really easy because all we do is we fill in the kids so our different groups and it's really helped us become aware of the the different range of student abilities in each of our classes. We all, we've always known that we've had a huge range of kids and some of them are very low and some of them are very high but We've actually, for the first time, really looked at each and every individual student in our classes and placed them in a group and used something, some sort of framework then, that we can move them up and we know exactly who they are. And now the, the, the challenge is getting the teachers for every lesson, having a look at those three different groups and modifying the work for all the groups of students. Now obviously this, again, we've spoken about the challenge of time. But hopefully when we're doing our collaboration with planning together as teachers, it makes it a lot easier if you've got two teachers working on, you know, working on individual work rather than just the one teacher doing it. So this has been really helpful for us. Okay. In addition to our uh, PLUS documents, we've also looked at our, the way we, that we shape our curriculum documentation. Uh, and this year, really, we moved towards embedding a lot of the AIZ initiatives into our curriculum documentation in the way that making teachers aware of not only the content that they have to teach, but also the way that they're going to deliver that to, to the students. Um, let me bring up a couple. Okay. So, as you can see, we've got a week by week, the topics and areas that we're going to cover, uh, the content our assessment of the students and also the strategies that we're going to use including our uh, the John Munro strategies and also the strategies uh, and the ideas put across by Peter. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so our PLT structure, our professional learning team structure, has changed again this year. And because we have moved towards hubs, we thought there was a natural progression into our PLTs becoming our hub groups as well. So the teachers who do predominantly teach in those hubs now form our PLT groups where we look at our performance and review and we work through our AIP goals together and make sure that all teachers are are aware of the goals and are moving towards meeting the goals as well. So we do those meetings every three weeks and we touch base and basically work through issues with students in the hub and then looking at our goals and making sure that everyone knows where we're at. Um, our meeting structure, when we looked at last year how we were going to be able to deliver professional uh, development to, to the staff, we looked at how we were going to be best be able to do that and we ran through, last year we mainly focused on John Munro and we decided to have at the start of every month we would look at a new strategy. We would then allow staff the time to uh, buddy up with someone who they trusted. Uh, those people were then to, over the course of that month, develop a lesson that they would go in and uh, observe and then reciprocate. The other person would observe their lesson and then be able to feed, uh, have some feedback about that and then bring that back into the hub in order to discuss how, how uh, it was going. 